Let's do a little bit of a collection ramble today. I'm going to share the watches that I am currently wearing that I am enjoying. But before I and before I unveil them officially, let me talk a little bit about uh, collecting in general. And I think you guys will definitely be able to relate to this. Where I was, say, eight or nine years ago is where I think a lot of you watching me right now are currently at in your watch collecting journey. And that's a great thing. You slowly and methodically build a watch collection that you could never see selling. You know, you spend a lot of time analyzing a particular purchase and you look forward to making that purchase. And then you get that watch and you could never see selling that particular piece. And you build slowly watch upon watch and each watch builds upon the prior purchase. And eventually, and hopefully, you arrive at a collection or a rotation where you have all of your bases covered. You have some variety or you like collecting specific niches like you're all about divers or Seikos or Rolex or chronographs or vintage watches or precious metal pieces, or you like the variety of a Japanese watch, a German watch, and a Swiss watch. You like the affordable, the mid-level, the high-end, and the ultra-high-end. However you enjoy collecting, I think most people like to slowly and methodically build upon their rotation. And they, you know, when they buy a watch, they don't ever see selling that watch. And that's not me. I've changed. That's how I used to be, again, like eight or nine years ago. But I started filming watches and people started watching my reviews on YouTube. And then I started getting a lot of watches in from brands and dealers and whatnot. And I've seen so many. My my desire for watches, I guess, clicked into hyperdrive. And I want to see as many as possible and I want to own as many as possible. So I started flipping and I liked it and I started doing it a little bit more and I started changing the collection at a faster rate. I started enjoying my watches to a faster degree and I found I really, really enjoyed that. So I have no problem in selling a watch that I love, that I adore, that there is nothing specifically wrong with that watch. I can sell a Vacheron Constanta overseas. I can sell a Tudor. I can sell a Grand Seiko. I can sell a Zenith or an IWC or a Seiko. It doesn't matter what the watch is. I can sell a watch that I love and that I've really enjoyed wearing because there is always another watch that will be coming into the collection. It's right around the corner in the FedEx delivery van. And that excitement of getting something new and changing the collection and seeing how that dynamic evolves, that's a fun thing for me. So I want to try as many watches as I can because I know there is always going to be a very exciting watch around the corner. I'm going to see that new Cartier. I'm going to see that new Longines or that new Breitling. And that's fun. So I know I'm different. I'm an anomaly. You could say there's something wrong with me. You could say that I'm crazy. But That being said, I've talked to some of you who are coming along to that type of collecting to where you buy a watch you like, but you also want to try the other one that you were seriously considering. And so whether you add both to the rotation or you try one first and then you sell it and you get the other one, however you get into it, I know some of you are really enjoying flipping and uh, changing up the rotation and the collection to a faster degree than you previously did. I know some of you come up to me and you say, Bruce, I'll never sell this watch. It's so perfect. It's sentimental to me. I got it because of this or because of that. <laughs> and uh, not to not to be facetious here, but those same individuals are coming to me a year later going, hey, Bruce, do you know anybody that would buy this watch? And I never say, hey, I told you so. No, why would I do something like that? That's silly. I, uh, I definitely try to help out anybody that's reaching out to me and express my enthusiasm for your enthusiasm. And if you sell a watch, eh, not a big deal because something else awesome is on the way. And again, I think that's a good thing. So whether you slowly and methodically collect or you're in the middle or you're a hyper collector or flipper like I am, uh, go about the hobby the way you see fit, whether you have rules or whether you have no rules. So that being said, let's talk about my current collection. I'm going to show you all the watches that I have at the moment, talk about what I have inbound and what I have planned next. Uh, Again, I don't have rules. So you could look at my rotation here and say, hey, Bruce, what what happened to this watch? I thought you bought that this year. Like, what's going on? Was something wrong? Well, well, no, (laughs) no, nothing was wrong. I 
love. I love all the watches I buy and I can let go of a watch that I love because something else awesome that I love is on the way or has replaced that watch. And again, those watches, the watches you're seeing right now will probably change again by the time I do another state of the collection video. And hey, maybe they've even changed two or three times in the space of that duration. So that being said, let's start with some of the more affordable watches and then we'll go up into the mid-level and the high end. And uh, here's the first one, guys. Here is a Seiko. This one is a Recraft. This one was discontinued about four years ago, if I'm remembering correctly. And this one is a sentimental watch for me because it was given to me by my father, who I love and respect. And it doesn't matter the watch. Like this could have been a Vostok. This could have not even have been a watch. It could have been his personal diary or his favorite tie or whatever it is. Like I would have valued anything he was going to gift me to the same degree that I do with the Seiko. It just so happens to be a watch. So it's in the state of the collection video, even though I don't wear it very much. I really, really like it because of the sentimentality. And I think a lot of you can agree with that. You have sentimental pieces that you enjoy because of the familial or mentor relationships that you have with those individuals that gifted you or left you that watch. Now, continuing, we have two watches that are very divisive to say the least. And that's part of the reason why I like them so much. I'm a bit of a contrarian myself. So you know, when somebody's saying, hey, that's stupid, I don't like that watch, uh, I like it a little bit more. But I recognize the gamesmanship, the release was totally botched on the part of the Swatch group. But I have the mission to Uranus and I have the mission to Mars. And I find these very, very fun watches to wear. And I've paired them on fitted Zealand rubber straps, premium straps that are about $100 less at retail than these watches are at retail. So uh, tell me that's not the mark of a true watch nut to where you spend money on the straps, almost as much money as the watch itself. I think that's funny how that worked out, but I really like these two pieces. I do wear them regularly in rotation. And continuing here, we have a Longines. This is the Avigation Big Eye in titanium. And I've heard it's grade five, but I haven't been able to confirm that with the Swatch Group. But this is a very beautiful retro-inspired design with an asymmetrical layout in terms of the size of the registers and the fonts and the different hand designs. The Fume Blue Petroleum Dial, the texture here, the creamy loom. This is just such a beautiful watch that anytime I put it on, whether I've been wearing it straight for three days or I haven't worn it for two weeks, this is just, I don't know, one of those watches where I go, oh yeah, I, I definitely made a good choice with this one. I have no plans on selling this anytime soon. But again, let's knock on wood. Uh, I, this could be replaced in the coming year. We'll see what happens, but love this watch. Love the thermally blued column wheel in the value modified movement. I think it is a shame that you can't see it through an open case back, but it's a great piece. Now continuing, let's go to another chronograph. This one is the Tudor Black Bay Chrono in the Panda configuration. I love the snowflake hands. I like the screw down function pushers. I like everything about this layout, the restrained use of red and uh, the aluminum tachymeter bezel insert. I think this one is just a great versatile piece. And I like to say that I gave Tudor the idea because I did Photoshop mock-ups, a suggestion for Tudor to create. And a year and a half later, they made the watches to the T. So uh, I, whether it's a happy coincidence or they did see my video and say, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Uh, regardless, it's an awesome watch and I love wearing. And this one, you could be, you could be uh, safe in saying that this is going nowhere anytime soon. Now continuing, we have another chronograph. I know the last few watches have been chronos, but this is the IWC Pilot Chronograph 41 in blue, lovely sunray blue dial, sunken sub registers with concentric circle texturing, one of the best bracelets in the business, very good finish work, very nice wrist presence, a great in-house movement. Then you can see through an exhibition crystal there is a vertical clutch, a column wheel here in this architecture. It really is a beautiful piece that is near perfect. There are very few things that I would change 
about this and I like the heft. I like the size. I like the light play. This one is very, very special. So uh, I like wearing these different chronographs because they're all a little, a little bit different, right? We have these ridiculous quartz chronos in the moon swatches and then we have the uh, big eye that's very different and then there's a bicompax chronograph with the tutor and then this one has the day date and the orientation of the registers is rotated so i have a good mix of chronos and in fact i have another one inbound that i've paid for and hasn't been uh it hasn't shipped yet but i'll just drop in some video of it it is the tissot prx chrono in blue reverse panda integrated bracelet open case back valjou movement that one is so dang strong for its price. I had to buy it. I had to say yes to that watch. And so hopefully sometime in the next month, I'll get my hands on it. But that one is inbound. And I don't see moving on from that anytime soon. Because what am I going to replace it with? How better could I spend around $1,700? I don't think that I could, uh, horologically speaking, make a better uh, financial decision than that. Now, continuing, let's go to a couple Rolex models. I know Rolex isn't everyone's favorite brand, but I have two that I just adore, and uh, I think they work very well with each other. One is the Hulk. It's discontinued. I love the green. This is Rolex's corporate color. I like how dynamic this looks in natural light, and I wear this all the time. This one is not a safe queen. I take this hiking. I take this camping. I take this, and I do sport watch activities. You can see... It's a little bit scratched up. There's a ding in the case side. There's a dent in one of the lugs. It is uh, used and loved, and I think it is one of the easiest watches to wear in terms of comfort and in terms of versatility and in terms of uh, providing everything one could hope for in a sports piece. This is just a very special watch. Now, it is next to a Sky Dweller, and I would argue this is my most significant watch, horologically speaking. We have an annual calendar here. We have a GMT. We have time. We have a date. This one is just beautiful. And there is one crown. There is no external function pushers. We have a white gold fluted bezel ring command that uh, helps me set the different features. And I think this one is gorgeous in bright black. And I think the fluted bezel paired with the Jubilee is just a match made in heaven. I prefer this bracelet as opposed to the smooth PCLs and the Oyster. And I think if you're going to buy a Rolex with a fluted bezel, you need it on Jubilee or you need it on a President bracelet. I think those are the best pairings. But this one, again, is going nowhere. It's my most accurate watch. It's my most significant watch from a complication standpoint. And I think the only time I would ever be tempted to sell a Sky Dweller or a Hulk, and don't send me any DMs or messages because I'm not going to be doing it. But the only reason why I ever see letting go of these hard-to-come-by models is if I were going to take a crazy step, horologically speaking, and get a full precious metal watch with grand complications. Like if I'm going up into Paddock, or if I'm going up into Longa, or, or something like that, maybe, maybe at that point, when my lifestyle is completely different, but uh, I just can't see doing it anytime soon. Now, lastly, I have uh, the newest watch to my rotation. I'm not sure if you've seen my video on this or not uh, because uh, I'm not sure which order I'm going to be posting the things that I film. But I have a new watch from Breitling. This one is the Super Ocean 44 in turquoise. And the one that I'm showing you is on the rubber strap, but I have it on the bracelet. This is just such a a cool watch. I like the retro design language and you guys will notice a theme with that. My Black Bay is retro inspired. Obviously the big eye is the Speedmaster design language is decades old and this Super Ocean just blends the old with the new in such a flavorful way. I like the bezel action. I love that massive chunky minute hand. There is no issues in telling the time. It is so legible. It is so bright. The ARC is awesome. The new adjustable clasp is amazing. Uh, this one takes up a ton of wrist time. So at the moment, that is where my collection stands, but we could be seeing some changes. Again, I have that to sew and bound. I'm looking at a Breitling. I'm looking at other Seiko. I'm looking at Grand Seiko. I'm looking at Cartier. I'm looking at a lot of stuff, and I don't have a specific plan for what is next. It usually is whatever I'm feeling 
whatever opportunity presents itself, say a good price pops up on Watch Recon or something like that. I'm not sure whether it's a new release or watch I've been familiar with but have never pulled the trigger on, or hey, maybe it's even a rebuy. I'm not exactly sure where I am going next, but I do have a long list of watches that I would like to try and not just borrow and film from an AD or from a brand, but try in the sense where I size the bracelet and I wear it around and I take it hiking and camping and I wear it to work and I use it and I enjoy it. That's how I want to experience the watches. So guys, let me know what you think of my collection. Again, if you if you know I have a watch that you didn't see today, I no longer have it. It's no longer in the rotation. I have a couple other little ones that I haven't showed you, but for the most part, this is my core. These are the most worn watches, and I'm looking forward to changing it up again. And I look forward to trying other new watches from a multitude of different brands. This is a fun journey for me. So thanks for sharing the experience. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.